Tone, 8 o'clock. Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark cards bring you an unusual true story on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. And here is our distinguished host, Mr. Lionel Barrymore. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Hallmark Hall of Fame, where we tell you true stories about real people. Tonight, the story of Robert baden Powell. In America, we call it Powell, but our drama is in England, and Powell it shall be. For those who remember Robert baden Powell, he, he was an Englishman of gallantry and arms, he served his country as few men have served it. He also created an army of such greatness that the world has never seen its equal, an army of peace. And tonight, we'll tell you why and how he did it. We're also pleased to have as our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. And later in the broadcast, you'll hear from two very distinguished special guests. Now here is Frank Goss. There are Hallmark cards for every day in the year. For every day in the year is made happier by a Hallmark card. Not only the special occasions, anniversaries, birthdays, and holidays, but the Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays of everyday living are made brighter, richer, when you send a Hallmark card. Because a Hallmark card says just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. And on the back is that identifying Hallmark that says you cared enough to send the very best. Lionel Barrymore appears by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the color picture Knights of the Round Table in Cinemascope, starring Robert Taylor, Ava Gardner, and Mel Ferrer. And now Mr. Barrymore brings you tonight's true story, starring Mr. Herbert Marshall on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. In 1896, Robert baden Powell was in Rhodesia scouting the enemy force of Matabeles, who had risen up and massacred the settlers. He had one companion, an American attached to the army whose name was Burnham. They had ridden into the Matapal Hills together to learn where the Matabele regiments were posted. Whoa. Whoa. Hold up, boy. Whoa. See something, sir? In those caves. No, no, to your right. About a quarter of a mile. Oh, there? Right. Do you see it? Yes, they're up there all right. Make a note of it on the chart, will you? Yes, sir. Well, how many do you figure? Rather difficult to say. There could be a hundred, two. We'll come back tonight for a closer look. Yes, sir. Today we've been out for 11 hours on a patrol in the heart of enemy country. It's not so much the distance that tires one as the constant tension of being on the alert. Burnham's a good scout. I'm lucky to have him with me. We have no tents, simply sleep in the open and employ what knowledge we have as woodsmen, using shrubbery and natural camouflage for protection from hostile eyes. Wonderful clear night, sir. Yes. Are you writing in the diary of yours? Just a few odds and ends. One of these days, I'm going to put these things together and write a book. You know, after the fighting is done, a man has to consider what lies ahead for him. Do you think much about that, Burnham? No. This is my kind of life. Always will be, I suppose. Rather odd. What, sir? I was just thinking, when I was at school, Charterhouse, I used to go out in the woods alone, do almost what we're doing now. I suppose I didn't think of it as scouting then. The enemy was always imaginary. And animals were a little more friendly than some of the things you run across out here. It's funny the games youngsters play. I know. 
I never thought I'd be playing the same game again. At my age. Hello. Hmm? That would be the signal. They may have spotted us. We'd better move on. I think when the time comes, we'll be able to attack them up in those caves. They will take more troops than we've got now, but we'll do it. We've got to do it. That's the job. Days of war. Days of peace. And I find time to do my writing. A book on the Matabili campaign. And some rough sketches to go along with it. Then to India and my great pride in assuming command of the 5th Dragoon Guards. Lieutenant Colonel. I must keep the men well trained and healthy. It's amazing what they can do if they have half a chance. Training. Teach them to take care of themselves under any and all conditions. And the time passes. Baden Powell was ordered back to South Africa. 1899, war. The siege of Mafeking. October until the 17th of May. And the great word reaches London. Maeve King's been relieved. Baden Powell's a hero. Have you heard the news? What? What? Who? What? Baden Powell's done it. He's a ruddy hero. That's what? The greatest victory that England ever had. It will strike me, Pink. Teach them blinking boars a thing or two, won't it? Not off. And I'm going home to tell me old lady. We just had another little nipper, a boy this time, and I'm going to call him Baden Powell Sykes, that's what. Well, hip, 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 ready roll for you. Here, let's hop down to the ear wig and I'll stand you a pint. I see. Orbison, isn't that Baden Paul over there, Lady Edmonds? Yes, you've met him, haven't you? I'm ashamed to say that I haven't. Well, then, you're about the only man in England who hasn't. Ever since he returned from Africa, he's been absolutely lionized. You wonderful chap. I must introduce you. Come along. Perhaps we can get him to go into the library. You know, the women simply worship him. Wish I had half the luck. <laughs> Oh, yes, I always had great hopes for the South African constabulary. The men were fine types, well trained. And it's turned out even better than I expected. I think the people here at home are more interested in your war record than they are in your peace activities. I know, Mr. Winters, that's the trouble. As a matter of fact, I'm rather tired of it. No, to be perfectly honest, I'm fed up to the teeth. Oh, my dear. Oh, it's nonsense, Orbison, and you know it. Hero worship. Good Lord, I was only doing a job. I would think I'd won the war practically single-handed. Well, sir, I'd say from what I've heard, that's about what you did. Why on earth can't they forget about war? Heroes. War's over. The heroes are going to be of our peaceful future. Doesn't anyone want to think about that? Ah, that is exciting, old boy. Now, just to me, if our youngsters ever had a chance to learn about living instead of killing, you've no idea what we found out in the campaigns. I mean, everyday things that don't seem to matter. Learning to use what nature has given us. Oh, you sound as though you're on a crusade, my dear fellow. I am. And at this moment, it's for the good of Baden Powell. Let him live in peace. I'll make you a committee of one, Orbison, to begin a slanderous campaign against me. Perhaps that'll make them forget Africa and Mafeki. <laughs> it's done. I'll pass the word. Uh, you flog your Batman daily and twice on Friday, huh? Good, eh? Well, that's the beginning. Uh, seriously, that, that, that book of yours, now, what the devil's the name of it? Uh, oh, uh, uh, Aid to the Scout. Aid to Scouting. That's the one, yes. Now, my boy at school, he says it's quite the thing there. All his chums are going in for it. Now, what's it about? Oh, bits and pieces I jotted down. How to make a fire without matches, all that sort of thing. We used quite a bit of that in the bush. Oh, it's frightfully interesting, sir. Well, I got a letter from the boy a few days ago. I believe that he mentioned they'd started a BPSS, Baden Pearl Scouting Society. Scouts. Scouting for boys. Hmm? What? Scouting. Boys. All ages, all over England. Learning to grow into men. Oh, my dear old chap. <clears throat> Playing hide and seek in the bushes. Growing into men. I say. Learning to trust. To be put on their honor. 
that's part of it. A code of ethics. Why not? Well, I should think that's up to the masters in the schools and the parents, wouldn't you? Why not up to the boy? Give him a sense of values. Let him develop for himself. Boys, scouts, troop of little ragamuffins running about playing soldier? Not playing soldier, no. Not soldier. Ah, that's what it would be. I suppose you'd give him guns. <laughs> well, I can tell you it won't work. Never. He hasn't got a chance. Boy scouts. Oh, Tommy Rot. Never heard of such a thing. Boy scouts? <laughs> In just a moment, we return to the second act of the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Say, a look at the calendar shows that a very happy day is coming up soon. A day that sort of breaks up the long winter months between Christmas and Easter holidays. Of course, that day is St. Valentine's Day. Now, everyone, from your kid sister or older brother to your grandparents, likes to be remembered on Valentine's Day. So better plan to drop in soon at a store that features Hallmark cards you'll find a wonderful variety of Hallmark Valentines to choose from. There are Hallmark make-your-own Valentines the children can assemble themselves without paste or scissors and send their school chums. And teenagers especially will get a big chuckle out of the Hallmark humorous Valentines with their hilarious designs and verses. And, of course, you'll find a beautiful, personal Hallmark Valentine for that one extra special person. A Valentine that says what you want to say, just the way you want to say it to your sweetheart, or husband, or wife. There are lots of delightful Hallmark Valentines, too, for you to send good friends and relatives. And remember, the Hallmark on the back shows you cared enough to send the very best. And now Lionel Barrymore brings you the second act of our true story of Robert baden Paul, starring Mr. Herbert Marshall. of the Boy Scout movement. And ideas well enough born, but how much faith and effort is needed to keep it living? Robert baden Powell began a series of lectures, and in one city after another, he filled the halls. Well, some didn't like his idea, and they made sure he knew it. I am planning an experimental camp for the boys, which I hope to see formed in Dorset sometime this summer. Through this camp, we should have... Now, uh, look here. This scouting business for boys is all very well. But with a general at the end of it, it can't help but be a military organization. We don't want our boys playing soldiers. <laughs> I see no earthly reason why an old circus horse, having finished his career in the ring, should not settle down peaceably to the useful civil occupation of pulling a baker's cart. A horse is still a horse. Does not need to become a donkey. Boys get enough exercise in sports. Why cram their heads full of nonsense that can't do them a bit of good? It'll ruin their clothes crawling through the mud scouting each other, I say. <laughs> I can see no harm in a boy learning to follow a trail to safety if he becomes lost. Or, for that matter, helping his fellow man by performing some small service, which otherwise, to no one's benefit, would remain undone. I don't like yeah, it. Yeah, it's yeah, regimentation, yeah. that's what. It's not British. <laughs> Today, Lord Roberts spoke to me of the idea. He felt that good instructors would be needed and a certain amount of financial assistance required. He hopes the scheme will be given a fair trial. I've definitely decided to start the first camp in Dorset. We shall see. Oh, I am dashed if I know why I put money into this thing. It won't work. Well, if it weren't for the fact that you talked me into letting my son come here... Well, you'd uh, back out? Oh, well, I suppose not, but... Uh, what do you think you're going to accomplish? Look at them, buzzing about there. Over there. They've only just arrived, Orbison. Give us a chance. Normally, the boys would waste most of their holiday at home or wherever they go, wondering what to do with themselves. I want to put them to work. Working at things boys like to do. Working under their own leadership. Boys in charge of boys? Exactly. Even yours, if he qualifies. 
Anarchy. You'll see. Wish me luck, Orbison. It was a success. The boys enjoyed themselves thoroughly and rose to heights that I did not believe possible. They lived together under what we call scout law. And it's the beginning of great things. Bert, you seen that scout suit the nippers are wearing nowadays? I haven't I just. <laughs> I had to lay out ten bob for mine to buy one. Just like Biden Powell wore in Africa. I saw pictures. I tell you half them kids all gone by me. Helping old ladies crossing the streets. So polite I give mine a whack the other day for luck. It's not normal for a kid to be so polite like. It's not normal. <laughs> So there was still criticism, but it didn't stop the movement. Another camp was formed, and another. Then there was a king who summoned baden Pole. He, too, had something to say on the subject. I suppose you're wondering why I asked to see you. As a matter of fact, I am, sir. Well, sir, quite simple. In view of your past services to England, and especially your present one of raising Boy Scouts for the country, I propose, baden Pole, to make you a Knight Commander of the Royal Victorian Order. I am deeply honored, sir. Yes. And sit down, won't you, and tell me about yourself. I don't see where you find time to do all this. And really, I don't. Between your army life and the scouts, it's amazing. I don't find time, sir. I suppose I get up a little earlier to make more. <laughs> I follow you. Yeah. You know, I understand you're a household word these days. It's beyond me why you don't stand for Parliament. You couldn't lose, you know. I should love to, sir. Which uh, side would you suggest? Sir Robert baden Pearl. Sir Robert. <laughs> I'm proud of you, old boy. Proud. Thanks, Orbison. I must admit I'm rather proud myself. Yeah, what's he like? The king? Yes. The way you would expect him to be. The king. Oh. Yes. Yes, of course. Oh, well, Sir Robert, what now? What about you? Me? I don't... Uh... You, you, your life. Seems to me that you've done everything for everybody and nothing for yourself. Oh, stop it, Orbison. Don't be an idiot. No, I mean it. Haven't you ever thought of marriage? A family? It's done these days, you know. I've thought of it. I can't imagine any woman putting up with me. I'm not young. And, well, Orbison, there's always something to send me off to India, Africa, heaven knows where. What sort of a life would that be? For some woman, quite exciting, I should imagine. Well, I'm off on a tour overseas next month, so I'm afraid that excited lady will have to wait. <laughs> I rather envy you, Robert. Envy? Why? We've done so much. So many things a woman never has the chance to do. And what great thing would you like to do, Olive? <laughs> You're laughing at me. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to. I've never met anyone quite like you before. Perhaps that's why I seem to laugh. It covers my confusion. I confused you? Why? You're young. That in itself is confusing. I think that I've forgotten how to behave with young people. Oh, a mark against me. Not at all. So that you have so many mature ideas. These past two days, I've listened to you as we talk, and I'm surprised at your knowledge of people, life. Then I look at you, Olive, and... Yes? Well, there's the contradiction. You're much too pretty, too young. Oh, I, I don't know whether to be flattered or angry. Oh, please don't be angry. I shan't. Would you like to walk around the deck? Yes. Shall I tell you something about you now? I wish you would. Sometimes you frighten me. Oh? You seem to be such a dedicated man. That, that is frightening, isn't it? Yes. Am I? I've never thought of my work in that way. It's as though I'm entering my second life now. That isn't dedication. It's enjoying living. At least that's the way I feel it. 
But always alone? Yes, yes, there is that. It can be alone, as sometimes it is. I think that's one of the reasons I've enjoyed knowing you. I can share my ideas, plans, with somebody. With you. You're such a good listener, Olive. One needs to share such things, you know. I know, Robert. I know. I have everything now. My wife. My work. Together we can see it growing. A brotherhood. We like to think of it as that. The boys and girls of England, America, no more than that, a chain through the whole world. All the links holding together a great army of young people working for peace. They are the guiding hands. They are the ones who will see it through. This is only the beginning. of that magnificent beginning. Robert Baden Powell brought to the world the international Boy Scout movement as we know it today. And his young wife went on to help establish the Girl Guides. In America, we would call it the Girl Scouts. And she's now the chief guide. The Hallmark Hall of Fame is truly proud to have with us tonight in a recorded message the gallant widow of Robert Baden Powell. Ladies and gentlemen, Lady Baden Powell. I'm very glad indeed to be allowed to associate myself with this program which has been broadcast about the Scouts and the work that my husband did in founding the movement all those years ago. I would like to thank Mr. Barrymore for his share in making his work more known through this broadcast. And it is good indeed to feel that the movement that my husband founded is being thought about and is being remembered. And I'd love to feel that all this work that he founded has been of such value to boys and girls the whole world over. And indeed, there are millions and millions of men and women scattered over the face of the globe now who do remember the days when they were scouts and guides when they were young and perhaps the influence of the movement has helped them to fulfill their tasks in adult life and indeed one can feel that the scout and guide movement all over the world is helping to make the world indeed a happier and a better place and so I am so glad that my husband's name is being remembered in this way through this broadcast and that his name will live far into generations to come Thank you, Lady baden Pole. One of those who remembered being a Boy Scout is the distinguished actor, Mr. Henry Fonda, who is currently on Broadway starring in the Kane Mutiny Court Martial. He's recorded a special message for us tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, speaking for the Boy Scouts of America, Mr. Henry Fonda. Some of the happiest memories of my youth come from my days as a Boy Scout in Troop 42 in Omaha, Nebraska. One of the pleasantest of these is a recollection of seeing and hearing Lord baden Pole when he was visiting extensively in this country and spoke to the scouts all over America. As a former scout, I appreciate tonight's dramatization of the life of the founder of this great organization. The Boy Scouts of America observed their 44th anniversary week from February 7th to February 13th. Hallmark's gesture in telling the story of Lord baden Pole at this particular time launches this anniversary appropriately. I want to thank them and the Columbia Broadcasting System in the name of the Boy Scouts of America. Learning how to be a friend is a very important part of a child's education, and that, I believe, is one reason why so many schools encourage the youngsters to exchange valentines with each other. Sending a valentine to a school chum is both friendly and fun. And it's even more fun when the youngsters can make their own valentines. Well, at the fine stores that feature Hallmark cards, 
you'll find Hallmark make-your-own valentines that are just perfect for children. They're easy to assemble without paste or scissors. Some have movable parts, like the cuckoo that comes out of his clock and the bunny who can flop his big ears. You'll find these Hallmark Valentine kits from 29 cents to 79 cents. And there are separate kits for boys and girls, for different ages, too. There are also lots of Hallmark Valentines all ready to mail for both children and grown-ups. Humorous Valentines, friendly Valentines for friends and relatives, and, of course, special personal Valentines for that one special person. Remember the hallmark on the back of the valentines you send shows you care enough to send the very best. And now here again is Lionel Barrymore. Uh, thank you, Frank. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, you know, you just made a very wise and true statement when you said uh, learning how to be a friend is a very important part of a child's education. That's why it seems so fitting that we should honor the founder of the Boy Scouts on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. For teamwork and friendly cooperation are two of the most important elements of the Boy Scout program. W wouldn't you say so, Herbert Marshall? Indeed, yes, Lionel. I know as the years go by, Scouts might forget how many merit badges they earned or for what. They might even forget how to tie a knot. But they never forget the spirit of friendship that is part and parcel of every Boy Scout troop in the world. Incidentally, Lionel, you'll be interested to know the Boy Scouts from all over the world will contribute Friendship Rocks to build an international goodwill monument to Lord Baden Pole on top of Mount Baden Pole here in Southern California. So you see, it was a great honor for me to play the role of the founder of the Boy Scouts, and I think you and the makers of Hallmark Cards are to be congratulated for bringing his interesting story to such a wide audience. Uh, we consider it a privilege, Bart. And the makers of Hallmark Cards and the stories that feature Hallmark Cards ask me to send you personal greetings to every Boy Scout in the world, too. Past, present, and future. And now, Frank, won't you tell the folks about our story next week on the Hallmark Hall of Fame? Next week, Mr. Barrymore, we will present an unusual and little-known story from the early life of Madame Curie. Ooh, that sounds very interesting, Frank. Well, until next week, then, this is Lionel Barrymore saying good night. <laughs> Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Our producer director is William Prue. Our script tonight was written by Anthony Ellis. Featured in our cast were Ellen Morgan, Jack Moyles, John Daner, Dan O'Herlihy, Ben Wright, Alec Harford, and Richard Peel. You are also invited to the Hallmark Hall of Fame on television, every Sunday starring Miss Sarah Churchill. This is Frank Goss, saying good night to you until next week at this same time, when we'll present a little-known story about Madame Curie. The following week, the story of Lee DeForest. And on February 14th, Mary Todd Lincoln, starring Jane Wyman, on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. This is the CBS Radio Network. This is KMBC.